Hello, everyone. Whoa, still sitting. Awesome. So we thought that since you're, it's hard always to split oneself, we thought we bring the deep track over here and let you all know what happened in the deep track. While you were listening to those talks here and they were so exciting, we thought we'd share what happened in the back of the house there which was the deep track. So who has not been in the deep track? All right, that's enough to spread at least what has happened. So as you can see, I, I, I invited a couple of representatives who have been either actively participating, running the deep track, and leading lots of discussions. So it was basically a format that we ran where we collected topics in the morning at 11.30, we stood there, we filled up a wall where we said, oh, we want to talk about this. And of course, one of the biggest topics was, which was it? Was it Webpack? Was it Wasm? Bundler was it top level of weight? So all JavaScript. And I mean, there was stuff I didn't understand. So that's why I would like to pass on to all of you and just introduce yourself a little bit. And then we will go around and see what happened in the deep track. So please. Hi, I'm Mariko. I didn't lead any sessions. I attended it. That's why I'm here, I guess. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tobias. I'm from the Backpack team. And I actively joined some of the deep track sessions. Hi, I'm Sean. Uh, I work for Microsoft, but also one of the maintainers of Webpack. We had a couple Webpack AMA and specific talks, but also involved in other standards related. Hi, I'm Johannes from the Webpack team. I uh, was really excited to talk about top-level await and HTML and CSS modules and all that stuff. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ben. I work on WebAssembly, and I had an AMA for WebAssembly. Hi, I'm Benedict. I work on the V8 team, and we had an AMA on V8, and also a discussion how to surface engine signals to the user. Hi, I'm Lucas. I'm the maintainer of RollupJS. I uh, also work for TNG Technology here in Munich. I think there are quite a few people here. And had a session about code splitting and rollup, and yeah, participated in many of the others. Hi, I'm Daniel Ehrenberg. I work for Egalia and in TC39 on JavaScript. And uh, we had several discussions about decorators and value types and other proposed JavaScript features. So I would like to start. Who had the most sessions? How many <laughs> sessions do you have? I think, Dan, you had five sessions, uh, was it right? Something like that. Yeah. Something like that? And they were about? Uh, so in one, in one session, we talked about uh, decorators, which you may be using with the at sign that you put in a class. And uh, there's a new version of the proposal that we're, we're thinking about in TC39. There's also value types, these immutable data types that Axel introduced to, to everyone yesterday. Um, and want to pass on to other people? Oh, so, so actually, if you, if you look up there, you see uh, all those post-its. That's what we collected in the morning. And that's the sessions that actually took, part, took place uh, over the day, the course of two day. Actually, yesterday was kind of the same size and amount of uh, sessions. And as, as I uh, witnessed before, this discussion uh, that Johannes triggered with HTML and CSS loading and the specification. It was a very intense one. And actually, it got over time. And it was like, OK, 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 we have so much input. It was a really cool all together discussion. And not just a, OK, here I'm a presenting. So it was a different uh, style, the deep track. And maybe you just take it away what happened there. You mean at the HTML CSS module? What did I say? Yeah. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Um, so you, you, there, so in, in Webpack, you, you're used to import CSS files and HTML files, and I think it's, uh, it became pretty common for developers to do that. And I'm really excited to see that, that standard people are catching up that, or using that idea and talking about how to, to design a, like a standard way, how, what does it mean to import, for instance, a JSON file, a CSS file, an H HTML file. And especially the HTML proposal is really interesting because it, it really looks like a, a single file component that you would use in Vue. So um, 
it, for me, it's a sign that, that standard people are caring about how we develop our software. So, um, I saw uh, before there was uh, arm wrestling, <laughs> was it? Was it yesterday? What was it about? Only, only staged. In, yeah. in truth, we all love each other. It was faked. It was faked. No, <laughs> no real fight happened. <laughs> <laughs> but it was. Uh... Now, really, so I, I have the impression that people kind of think that because I'm kind of maintaining a bundler, I should be all okay. We are better than Webpack in all meaningful aspects. And the truth is, well, we might be better than Webpack in some very distinct aspects, but like there is a vast majority of uh, the Webpack people are really doing awesome work that I would never ever manage to do just only in part. And um, also in the, in the sessions we saw there, uh, I wasn't aware of how, mu how much you were also into developing new specs, so like, like the proposals for the um, um, CSS and so on, and HTML modules that, that Johannes um, showed. Um, great work, and of course, um, you may not appreciate it, but the top level of weight idea that came out <laughs> by Tobias um, also makes me happy. Yeah, at this time there was a lot of discussion about specs which are really relevant for bundlers. Uh, I think top level weight is really relevant. Uh, WebAssembly modules was also discussed, which is really relevant for bundlers. HTML modules, CSS modules, um, yeah, many things happening in the spec which are. Uh, Standardizing uh, things we are already doing bundlers, and I think I think it's a good idea to standardize it because um, maybe in future you are no longer has to you no longer have to use bundlers that much, or bundler can generate more optimized code at one time. So it, it was so great, and I think we also have a good solution maybe for uh, a good idea for uh, how to solve the uh, top level weight stuff and asynchronous modules and yeah it was a lot of fun yeah I, I was really excited about all this spec discussion and in particular Tobias's uh, idea about import a weight which I want to discuss with more people <laughs> and gradually uh, and so I also wanted to mention that roll-up contributors have also been great contributors to specifications. For example, Guy Bedford has been very active in something you might have seen today just went to origin trial in Chrome, which is this key value storage and import maps proposal. And he's been very helpful with that as well as top level await. And so people for all different projects have been working together here. So I think this, uh, especially also in the deep track we saw that it's so amazing that how close we actually get to the users to the package provider, the modules builders, the specification writers, and all this, and how they're interacting. I think that's amazing. And big applause to everybody here just actually doing this, like the community and the people doing it. I'm, I think that's amazing community. Yeah. So uh, I heard, I was uh, standing outside at lunch and somebody said, ah, oh, it's the JS Congress. Maybe it's going to be the WASM Congress. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what uh, about WASM? We, we should arm wrestle about JavaScript versus WebAssembly, shouldn't we? <laughs> I mean, there's no competition. <laughs> What was going on about WASM in the, in the deep track? Yeah, so there's a lot of questions about um, where WebAssembly is going, like the proposals that are in flight. I mean, there's a lot of uh, additions to WebAssembly, so I can also officially announce that we ship threads in WASM. Um, so this is based on the... Thanks. <laughs> Um, so this is based on the same API that you have in JS, the Atomics API. So those are reflected in WebAssembly. Um, it's still based on workers, so it's not a new surface for creating uh, threads. Um, so it kind of interacts with the web platform in the normal way. Um, but this is like a nice upgrade, and there are many other features coming along, like uh, tail calls um, and reference types, which make WebAssembly and JavaScript work even better together. Um, there's progress on host bindings and various other things. So WebAssembly does care about JavaScript. We don't think that it's a competition. WebAssembly is happy to host any language that compiles to it. Um, so we don't want to like get in the middle of a language war. 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about WebAssembly and JavaScript interacting better. And one of the things we discussed yesterday was making it so that WebAssembly modules can be imported directly as JavaScript modules and making sure that all the different bundling tools that already implement WebAssembly modules can align with the draft specification. So it was great to have these different groups of people together. So, so besides going really deep into technology and all that, as you see, uh, at 2.30, we actually had in the, in the first room a discussion about is Chrome Monopoly good for the internet? And there were, there was, it just triggered a thing. You see that there's also diverse topics being uh, discussed in a, in a very healthy environment, which is, I think, a lot of fun. Who has been in that session? You've been in the <laughs> session? Maybe you want to share a little bit? Was it that fun? Awesome. Um, <laughs> man, what's the con? <laughs> okay, no, it was really topic. interesting. It was really interesting. Uh, so, so background information, I work for Google Chrome, and I work for a developer relation, so like talking to people and what the people think about, it's job, basically. And it was really interesting because uh, um, the, there is a lot of fear about Chrome, well, Edge coming to Chrome, I was Chromium, adopting a Chromium and um, potentially creating just a monopoly situation. And to me, it was interesting that the certain parts that people fear about are in certain way already addressed by a Chromium feature development policy, but also it's not known, as I learned yesterday after I gave my talk. A lot of people are like, oh, I didn't know this. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. That's a good feedback that I can bring back to my team about, you know, hey, like, we, we, we tried to prevent this monopoly situation by creating these things and doing this in public, but people don't know about, know about it. If people don't know about it, then that doesn't matter. So, yeah. And, you know, we, we stay pretty clearly. So <laughs> I also work for Microsoft Edge in our ecosystem team, which is, like, almost identical to what uh, Mariko is on for Chrome. And one of the things that we try to make clear to developers is that we plan, and, and this is part of our statement on GitHub, you know, for our repository for Microsoft Edge, that we plan to be active contributors to the Chromium project. So the goal here is that as more people or more entities contribute to this uh, browser, it allows us to have a more diverse, out-of-the-box experience that reflects the needs of, you know, not just Chrome and Microsoft, but also any of the other contributors that participate in this, pro or, you know, this open source project. Um, so we expect that it even becomes more transparent and we see more opportunities as time goes on. There was one question that Dan maybe can clarify on stage now <laughs> was about um, the three independent implementation criteria for stage three in TC39 and if that would ever change because of this merge. Oh, so, we, so for TC39, to get a proposal to stage four, you need two implementations. And what an implementation is, is something that is sort of evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. The committee tries to judge based on the nature of the particular proposal uh, whether we have sufficient experience uh, in, a, in a technical way. Um, that's kind of a non-answer. Uh, so I don't, so we, yeah, I think we did discuss this particular question of whether we would lower the amount, and I don't think there was much interest in lowering the requirements for stage four, but I think we'll continue to think about uh, what, what constitutes good implementation experience. We've had some interesting test cases recently that had nothing to do with uh, this change, but things like for internationalization, you have things like the intel.datetime format standard library in JavaScript, and Originally, we had sort of two underlying libraries. We had ICU and then the Microsoft Internationalization Library. So way back in, I don't know, 2013, 2014, there was a lot of discussion uh, with Google and Microsoft and, and Mozilla about what should be in the JavaScript Internationalization Standard Library. And it came down a lot to what's the intersection of these two underlying libraries. Later, uh, now everyone's using ICU, so uh, we can add all the capabilities that we didn't have to add before. And this question came up, and I think we're not going to worry about it too much. Uh, maybe that's also 
hopefully that's not too unsatisfying an answer, but we're just trying to be pragmatic in terms of we specify things in terms of the uh, relevant Unicode standards, which include locale data that can be tailored. Um, yeah. Is, is there anything else about the deep track that you want to share? If not, maybe there's some questions from the audience. Johannes had something? So I want to share that session about plugins. We talked about plugin systems in the beginning, and I think that's really interesting because I think a lot of developers are um, are puzzled with that with that question: how to design a plugin system. And for me, the interesting takeaway was that um, we kind of agreed that there's no perfect plugin system. That you always have this: ah, it's not the best thing, but but it also helps you to, to like extend the the product to to like um, let other parties develop your your product and I think there's this a pr pragmatic approach that you just say that um, yeah um, it's not perfect but um, it it solves the problem so uh, that was really interesting for me. Is there any question uh, that you want to ask? So you have people here from the TC39 from Google. Webpack, roll up. Any questions? Just forward to me and I speak it out loud. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Just tell me. Uh, is there any ETA on the garbage collecting garbage collecting for WebAssembly? I don't know if I can give you an ETA on that. Um so I think there's a, a lot of different uh, issues to hash out here and there's a bit of a chicken and the egg problem um, as far as like finding a, a language that fully utilizes the garbage collection proposal. I can tell you it is moving forward. People are, are working actively on it so I think there's already, s there's always been plenty of spec work at, at a low rate but also spec interpreter work. Um, I expect that people are going to start trying this out and taking it for a spin but I think this is actually going to take some time. I think um, because it, it has to be a low level mechanism which is suitable for many languages to compile to it. It has to be right. Um, so we don't want to make design mistakes that, that uh, for example, make it more difficult to do one language over another. Although we do have to uh, be reasonable there. We can't, we can't put the kitchen sink in there. Um, I think it's going to be uh, a journey of years maybe. It w definitely won't be done this year. That's about the best that I can say. Uh, there, there are multiple WebAssembly proposals which you could think of as garbage collection. So right now, if you want to have a reference from WebAssembly to the JavaScript heap, you have to have a sort of table off to the side. And everything in that table strongly references the JavaScript. So it won't get garbage collected even if there's nothing in WebAssembly pointing to it. Uh, and so a couple ways that this is being resolved is one is this AnyRef proposal which allows WebAssembly to have direct references that it can directly manipulate to JavaScript objects and delete those references. And these references are traced by the, uh, by the JavaScript garbage collector. The other proposal is the weak refs proposal, which is actually part of JavaScript, which can allow the references from such a table to be garbage collected when nothing else points to them. So although the WebAssembly GC proposal is further out, uh, these two initial proposals I think will come within Next, yeah, yeah, uh, we're working on the implementation. We're working on the implementation of reference types, so I think we'll have that pretty soon. So that, that's a good point, actually. So the GC proposal is kind of split out into multiple pieces, and so they're kind of these things are streaming out, and this is actually a good thing. The un uncontroversial things are are getting um, are getting shipped. Another one is Funcref too, so that is basically first class functions in Wasm itself that are typed, and those will be um, as efficient as closures in OCaml, for example. Um, but there's, a, there's other ways to split this. I, I imagine it will be this way that we, we can incrementally ship the uncontroversial bits uh, a little at a time. So I think the, the short answer is when do you need it? So, <laughs> so any other question? What were the biggest insights in the um, ask me anything sessions in the deep track. I've heard there was some proposal, some new suggestion for a proposal coming up. It's the AMA session you're asking specifically. No, general, general. No, the, anything. The, the import away, 
So I, I think the biggest insight at it's a deep dig at the whole was that um, we it, it's a day, day first uh, the first day we discussed about um, so I think then uh, Daniel proposed the session or did you so we talked about top level evade and put, um, discussed about the current proposal and there were some concerns about this proposal and I think the community or the, the session participants came up with um, a, with good ideas and I think we tried to write some proposal yesterday and so um, I, I, um, we had the session today with top level weight and the proposal and it, it seems like um, we are a big step back, um, next to uh, forward and um, yeah maybe this is less concerning than the current proposal and yeah I think we are a step forward I think yeah any other big insights? Or small. Or small. <laughs> what about bundlers? Did we decide on one? <laughs> <laughs> no bundlers. The, <laughs> the beauty is that you get to choose based on what your needs are. And I think that's, that's one of the coolest things about having Rollup and Webpack be in the ecosystem together. Uh, I mean, we even wrote articles in the past with Rich Rich Harris, like uh, I, I consider Rollup like one of our strongest partners in the ecosystem, because it then like we have more influence on standards uh, as we band together to you know to keep kind of standards implementers in check when it comes to designing features that might not be friendly to bundlers or might not consider tooling as a uh, as an as an existing practice for developers. And so like to us, it's super exciting, uh, you know, that there are more than just one bundler and that we can, you know, we can kind of stand together uh, in kind of representing ourselves and all of our users. Yeah, I think there was also some very interesting insights as Ma Matthias from my team presented an idea to move forward on shipping modern JavaScript. So adding a source set attribute to script tag, which would essentially allow you to produce multiple bundles Assuming that a uh, browser and tool vendors can agree on a certain subset of features that is available, like the 2018 web reality is like this number of features that is supported by all major browsers, and then 2019 and 2020 and so on. And we are actually trying to make progress on that. So uh, that being said, I think bundlers should always be there. <laughs> you should still bundle your code because it makes a big difference whether we have to fetch uh, 10,000 modules or just one file. <laughs> Plus, you can do things like tree shaking, which you don't get even in a world where uh, every browser supports modules. So there is a place for modules, uh, for bundlers, but uh, you should also, con or we want to consider moving forward on the JavaScript that is shipped. Yeah, and uh, we as bundlers are trying to um, follow or make emulate the web platform. So in theory, it should be possible, maybe in the future, that in, in development environment, you should be able, uh, we're trying to get to a, a way to make it able to, that you can use, uh, work without bo uh, bundler, but only use the bundler maybe for production, for optimization, or for, we, actually we see bundlers as kind of a pre-processing tool for web optimization or so. So we're trying to implement all these web standards, and we're trying to follow, if, if there's agreement on web assembly modules, we're trying to implement this, and HTML modules, CSS modules, and all this kind of stuff, um, bundlers trying to, emulate the web platform and trying to be some kind of optimization tool, not some kind of um, tool you get some different environment Absolutely. compared to the web. Yeah, it's not an alternate, it's more like a companion yeah. to the web platform. Absolutely. Thank you very much. One very short question, if you still have one left. Go. <laughs> You, the, the question is about tail call optimization in V8, yeah. so, so you have 30 so web, seconds. Yeah, and uh, in WebAssembly tail calls are explicit. There's uh, two new bytecodes that are being inter introduced. We're working on an implementation in V8 of those tail call bytecodes. We have all the compiler infrastructure. Um, and so it's, it's uh, excuse me, uh, advancing through the WebAssembly standards process. As far as JavaScript, that's a long story. I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think I could explain in 10 seconds. But there's, a, there's a disagreement about whether 
tail calls should be opt in, like in WebAssembly, or whether they should be implicit everywhere. All right. Thank you very much. So there are two more sessions left after uh, four o'clock. So if you're now interested in a deep track, feel free. If not, I thank you, everybody.